thanking you for having us here uh, yeah, and be able to spend some time with you to ask you these questions. Uh, first of all, uh, for what reasons do you want to become an ambassador? And how important do you think this role of being the Spanish ambassador to Germany is? Well, I, I am a career diplomat and I started being a career diplomat in 1986. So my idea was to follow the civil service and to follow the civil service, especially in foreign affairs. And then with the time you, you become an ambassador or you don't become an ambassador, that depends very much on, on, on several circumstances. Being ambassador in Berlin is, is, is one of my, was one of my, my, I would say, my dreams, if I may say so, because I did some part of my career in Germany. I was posted in Germany from 91 till 95, mm -hmm. and I have I, been general director for European affairs. I've been dealing with EU affairs all my career, and I was especially focused on, on Germany. So being ambassador in Berlin, it's, it's something that uh, not only is important as itself, but professionally very fulfilling for me. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and now that you gave us this introduction about yourself, uh, I would like to ask you uh, about the current economic and political situation in Spain. Uh, how uh, can foreign embassies uh, such as this one contribute to help Spain tackle such issues in, on economic and political? Well, we, we have been in this, I've been here for almost four years. And since the very beginning, the times were not easy. 2012, the crisis was very, very, very strong and the impression in Germany was very negative. So we had to overcome that impression due to two factors. First of all, to explain to the Germans what the reality of Spain was about, what we were doing at home and how the per perspectives looked like. And secondly, also to help the Germans understand what was the what were the efforts that the Spanish government, the Spanish population had to deal with and ask them for, for a more comprehensive approach in, 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 in tackling, as you said very well, the uh, 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 European crisis as a, as a whole. We had a national problem, but we also had a European problem. So my main target was to introduce both sides of the same coin into this bilateral dialogue. And I think we succeeded. Now we have a different type of approach. There is a, a political stalemate in, in Spain and the situation, although the economic situation is much, much better, the, the new uh, political uh, discussion uh, makes me also uh, to explain to the Germans what sort of uh, political debate we're dealing with. And this is quite normal. Uh, uh, all embassies have to deal with this sort of subjects. To, to transport to the local society, to the media, to the local uh, uh, politicians, what are you doing at home and how can you explain uh, in a foreign country what, has, what, what your objectives are. No, this is more, more or less my, my, my main target. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. And um, uh, now, uh, due to the good relationship between Germany and, and the Spanish governments nowadays, do you believe that there could be new cultural or economic agreements between Spain and Germany that could enha enhance our market and cultural institutions? Well, uh, the agreements are, are so thick. I mean, we, we, we don't need many agreements. What we need is to fulfill what we have. We have a lot of uh, connections through the uh, uh, European Union membership, and we have many bilateral things. But if we talk about cultural affairs, the, the relationship cannot be uh, stronger than it is, because it's really, really uh, important. Uh, just to mention that we have been in these months uh, doing the, uh, I would say, the most important uh, uh, cultural presence in the history of Spain in Germany in, 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 in many years. We have had um, exhibitions of Picasso, of Miró, of Zurbarán for the first time. I just inaugurated last week in München an exhibition of Sorolla for the first time in Germany. And the year uh, 2016 will be the year of Spain in Berlin, uh, in, in the Gemelde Galerie, there will be in June, uh, the most important exhibition of the Spanish Baroque. So 
we have a, 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 a absolutely amazing palette of, of activities, also dealing with music, dealing with uh, uh, modern art, with uh, performances, with uh, new generations of uh, artists. So I'm, I'm, I'm very satisfied in that respect. Uh, in terms of sociological uh, connection, uh, if you consider that Spain is the first destiny for uh, German tourists. So everything goes in the same direction that is a very, very tight and strong relationship. And concerning the market, because you uh, emphasize the relationship about with a uh, cultural relationship, but what about the market? Like, um, do you think that uh, Germany can some like maybe contribute to like improve the market uh, situation nowadays in Spain maybe? Or? Well, yes, we we have. I mean, from a trade perspective, we have uh, an increasing amount of exports here in Germany. Actually, we are exporting more than in any time in our history to Germany, and the Germans are recuperating the market after the Spanish crisis. So the trade balance has been growing steadily in the last uh, months and years. Then we have a very strong flow of investment in, in both sides. I always say the same. When I arrived to Germany in 1991, there was no Spanish companies. There were no Spanish companies in, 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 in Germany. And now, if you consider the big companies, the first uh, uh, construction company of Germany is a Spanish company. The first in number of clients, IT company, is a Telefonica in, in Germany. Uh, one of the first banks in, in, in Germany is uh, Banco de Santander. And you have um, uh, so many people working in the automobile industry. We are now, as you know, the, um, the second producer of the European Union of cars after Germany. And we are in the top eight now in the world. And that has a lot to do with the cooperation between the two uh, countries. For instance, when you sell a Mercedes to China or you sell an Audi or a BMW in, in, in Japan, you are also selling Spanish parts. And part of our trade surplus in, in third countries is due to the fact that we sell together a lot of things through the uh, car industry. Good. And considering uh, culture, uh, how is this Spanish embassy promoting a Spanish culture around Germany? We are doing on a permanent basis uh, three types of activities. First of all, we are trying to cooperate with the local institutions, which is the main target. So we have a, a very, very uh, good net work of uh, German institutions who are dealing with the Spanish art, culture, etc. And we're working with them, we're looking for cooperation with the Spanish institutions and with finance, uh, Spanish business people, etc. Then the second thing we're doing is we're trying to get to know what is of interest in Spain to project here. And we look for Spanish institutions to find a way to work with uh, German institutions. The main thing is to have a local cooperation, a local complicity. Without that local complicity, culture doesn't move properly. If you want to do the things by your own, completely independent from the society you are dealing with, you are not going to have a success. And the third thing, which is not unimportant, is how we use our network in Germany. We have one, if not the biggest network of uh, any embassy in Germany. We have five cultural institutes in, in Germany, that is the Cervantes Institute, and we have in this embassy uh, a, 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 a cultural uh, hall where we do exhibitions every two months and we do concerts and we do seminars on a regular basis. This embassy is permanently on the on the on the spot um, with uh, cultural affairs so five cultural institutes all over germany the uh, including berlin the spanish embassy with its own uh, institutional uh, um, uh, and, and, and building facilities and then what we have is this uh, great amount of uh, local and spanish institutions that work together mm -hmm. 
And now uh, talking from a more general perspective, uh, how does um, this embassy promote uh, cultural diplomacy in general? Because we mentioned like Spanish culture, but uh, considering cultural diplomacy, because it's like a, a very important tool to bring societies together, because through cultural diplomacy, we can uh, we kind of like break the difference between the different societies, uh, like, you know, ethnic uh, like religious uh, yeah like so how does uh, if some if it, i don't know if uh, it yeah, if it does this but does this embassy like promote cultural diplomacy or well we do it on the, on the, that, that is a key a key part of our work what we do is on a permanent basis regular uh, activities with the local societies so i personally have to deal with this on a on a on a more than weekly basis. Uh, today I have a dinner with 35 young students about Europe, and we 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 do explain to them what is the Spanish position regarding the refugee crisis, for instance, or we talk about what we are waiting for the new institutions to do, to deliver in terms of the uh, monetary union. And this is one instance one uh, foundation that comes to me and we have a dinner. Next week we will be doing uh, other activities either in Berlin or outside Berlin. I have uh, this week for instance I have a, a minister coming for the uh, uh, tourism fair and, and then we will be going through the fair with all the local uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs explaining to them how we deal with this uh, connection, tourism, culture, gastronomy, etc. Um, I, in, in, in 10 minutes I have to go to this uh, hotel to go to for a tapas uh, oh, yes. uh, session. So we do this in a, in a, in a regular in a regular basis. It's, it's very difficult to get thing here in mm. this country. Mm. <laughs> Good. And now, uh, just a last question. Uh, what kind of remarkable achievements have been made over the years by the Spanish Embassy here in Berlin? We, that would be very unmodest <laughs> if I have to say a remarkable achievement. I think what we have been able to do, and I think we, we, you, you could ask around in Berlin and people will, is to have a very high profile. We are an embassy that, also, thanks to this wonderful building and location and to the effort of all the colleagues, has a presence in most of the areas in, in, the, in the German society. So uh, not only me, that I'm very present in all these activities, but also the colleagues that are working here in different dossiers, environment, economy, um, agriculture, we do a lot of activities in labor uh, aspects with all these young people that come here to Germany. Uh, we, we education, we have a very high profile and we want to remain very high in this uh, profile because I think that helps the Germans to understand our country better and helps the Spaniards to have a more, not clear, not only clear understanding what is going on here, but also a better instrument to influence in the local debate, in the national debate, to get to pass through our positions, our interests, our, our goals in the German society. And that is very important, that we do it in a very global way, including fiesta, but including uh, seminars, including uh, art, but including economy, including culture, but including education, all things put together and show to the Germans and to European partners that we are a big country that has something to say in the world. Perfect. Thank you so much for uh, having us here and uh, attending this interview. We really thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time also. Thank you. <laughs>